All right, everyone, it's been one year with this car, and it's time to address a frequent question I keep getting on all my old videos. And that question is if I regret buying this 2023 Honda Civic Sport hatchback with the six-speed manual transmissions. So to answer that question, let's go for a quick drive. I'll give you my thoughts. So when I was shopping for cars in April of 2023, this car stood out to me mainly because of the drivetrain. The K20C2 engine with the six-speed manual transmission seems to be one of the last breeds of the original Honda that you can get that really was reliable. When I was considering buying this car, I was pretty hard set on the only way I would regret it is if they came out with the 2024 model and put a bunch of substantial upgrades into this trim and didn't raise the price that much. So from the fact that 2022, 2023, and 2024, all of the Civics are identical since they didn't change anything, I was pretty happy to hear that when after I bought the 2023 in April, that later that year when they announced the 2024 or wasn't gonna have any updates, I was very pleased to hear that. I didn't feel like I was missing out on any updates that improved the car significantly from the weaknesses found in the earlier years. With that being said, I'm sure you're a fan of the channel and have seen all my previous videos on this car for the last year, and you'll know that I've had a few issues with it. But the issues I've had, I will say, not one of them has ever left me stranded, not one of them has ever affected me driving the car. I only have 6,400 miles on it in this first year. I expect to put more miles on it this next year, mainly because I had my old 8th gen Civic that I was still putting miles on until July of last year. So this is my true one and only daily now. And like I said, mechanically, car is flawless. Yes, it does make some rattles in the engine bay that are a little bit annoying at times. And I haven't been able to figure out them. The dealer hasn't been able to figure out the rattles. There has been a rattle from the dash over in that area quite a bit when it's really cold out but now that it's like 42 I don't hear it there's always some rattle from the engine bay as I've shown in detail in my previous video if you haven't seen that video check it out on the channel but despite the issues I've had which is the rattles the leaking hatchback and if you've seen my previous video it's been a year of trying to diagnose the leaking hatchback and I think we have finally found the solution because it has been leaking for a couple weeks now so check out that video as well those two issues as well as the leaking valve cover gasket within the first 3,000 miles on the K20C2. It was seeping from the rear near the injectors and running down the back of the block and coating the subframe with oil. And that was the original oil straight from Honda. I hadn't even done my first oil change yet. So the dealer took care of that, new valve cover gasket, um, everything under warranty. But like I said, the key takeaway is nothing has left me stranded, nothing has affected the car's driving ability. And despite those issues, I will say, I do really still enjoy this car. Love the way it drives, the six-speed manual transmission. Very smooth. Downshifting once you get used to it with a little bit of throttle lag is not that bad. Like I said in many other videos, the, the rev hang when you're shifting through the gears is very minimal on the stock ECU compared to the 1.5 turbo models. Overall, you had to ask me if I regret the purchase overall. It's still a very tough question, but I would probably say no. Yes, I've had to deal with some unfortunate issues with this car in the first year, but like I said, it hasn't left me stranded. And being in the market for a new car these days is really tough because even now, a year later, I'm taking a step back and looking, if I were to never had bought this car and I was in the market for a new car right now, what would I consider buying? And at this price point, there's really nothing else I would still rather buy for a daily driver and a family of four. So the hatch area has great amount of storage. The rear seats have plenty of room for my children's car seats. The car overall, the interior of it is really nice and really big. The materials are nice. The steering wheel leather is very nice. The shift knob feels very good. The shifting action is absolutely phenomenal. But when you look at the MSRP, I got this car in the $25,000 range. No, no dealer markups, no gimmicks out the door for right around $30,000 with New York State tax. And any other car with a manual transmission in that category is either $30,000 MSRP starting or above. So this car really stands out as being one of the cheapest manual transmission cars that doesn't look like a total shit box on the inside.
I've stressed this a lot in my other videos, but one of the best things about this trim with the manual transmission is the engine and the drivetrain. You got the super reliable six-speed manual transmission. Honda knows how to make better than almost anyone else on the market. And this car having the naturally aspirated K20 C2 engine is a night and day difference in reliability compared to the 1.5 turbos. There's no direct injection on this, no high pressure fuel pump, no turbocharger. It's just old school port injection and naturally aspirated K-series goodness. No, it's not gonna be a rocket ship in a, in a straight line, but for a daily driver and a commute, you want a reliable car that's engaging and fun to drive. And this kind of ticks all the boxes, I will say for that. There's really nothing else like it. And for the price point in this mid $20,000 manual transmission car there's really nothing else that competes with this car a YouTube channel that I'm actually a really big fan of is BC Auto Solutions shout out to you dude he's an um, Honda technician I think he's a master technician and he's growing really quick on YouTube it's just mainly about Honda cars and his experience with them he works on them all day long and he's being transparent about all the new models and his recommendations of which cars to buy and the issues he sees with these new cars and he just put out a video a couple weeks ago about the top three Honda engines of all time. And the list was the R18, which was in my old Civic Daily Driver, which I loved so much because it just was a bulletproof engine. Not the most exciting engine in the world. Definitely felt anemic above four or 5,000 RPM when you stepped on it because you could just feel like the engine did not love to be in the higher RPM range. Different story for this K20. It definitely feels healthier at the higher RPMs. In second place, for his list was the L15 and the older Honda Fits, not the L15 1.5 turbo. He has actually claimed that engine to be the worst engine Honda has made of all time, being the oil delusion, head gasket issues, and the list goes on with the reliability with that engine. If you do have one of those cars and you're getting offended, I'm sorry, but you're, if you haven't had those issues, you're one of the lucky ones. There's a lot of people out there that have a higher failure rate than any other drivetrain Honda currently has in their lineup. The number one engine on his list was actually the K20 C2, so it makes me very reassured to have bought this trim, being that this car does have the engine, and you can still buy this engine brand new in Honda in this trim, or the, if you want a sedan go f and you don't care about having the manual transmission, go for the sedan Civic, the Sport or the LX that has the 2.0. And another great option on the market right now, if you need a little more space, is the HRV because it has the exact same K20 C2 engine with the CVT transmission. But this engine, from all his experience working on these cars, has been the most reliable and came in with the least amount of issues. He said the only issues he's ever seen with these engines working for Honda has been the leaking valve cover. And that's exactly what happened with mine, but it's really not that big a deal. It took 30 minutes to an hour at the dealer for them to replace that. And now I'll keep an eye on it, but a very slow leaking valve cover gasket is not catastrophic failure, like your injectors failing on your 1.5 turbo, oil delusion causing premature bearing failure, or even head gasket failure on the 1.5 turbos. This car is just such a gem in 2024 now, and I would advise picking one up before Honda decides to start removing the K20 C2 engine from its lineup. It's not as good with emissions, so Honda's probably gonna be phasing it out quicker than any of their turbo engines. You still have the port injection, which this might be the last engine in Honda's whole lineup that still has a low pressure fuel pump and port injection as opposed to the direct injection. And next year in 2025, Honda's bringing over the hybrid power plant from Europe. So that's gonna complicate things a lot more. It's gonna make the Civic pretty expensive for that trim. And if they keep this trim, Honda will have four powertrain options available for the Civic. They're gonna have this 2.0, they're gonna have the 1.5 turbo, they're gonna have the hybrid powertrain, and then they're gonna have the Type R. So the Type R is in a whole class of its own with affordability, but if you're looking for a cheap daily that's really fun in the mid $25,000 range, you know, this car is literally, uh, you know, after tax and considering markup and stuff, you're gonna pay on a Type R, this car is literally half the price. You could buy this car as a daily and get a very mid mileage and really clean Honda S2000 and probably still pay less than you would pay for one brand new Type R. So consider that in your purchase, guys. I know the Type R is a very, very nice vehicle. A lot of the popular YouTubers have one and they're making lots of content on them. That's not me, I don't have that type of budget. I'm trying to give you guys more content on this car as it's really the affordable spec for your everyday American. So the interior, 
I'm loving it. Besides the fact the armrest is not very comfortable, I go in detail about that in another video. Still hate the wipers with a passion. They did, my opinion has not changed on the wipers. The infotainment and the radio is okay. I said I tweaked some settings on here, made the stereo sound better. But a lot of people complain about the seven inch infotainment. I absolutely love it. It is super simple. It's not running any complicated software and it's super fast to respond. I love these physical buttons, calling people very easy. There's no lag at all and it just works. So no complaints about the infotainment, the Apple CarPlay. I really don't care it's wired. I don't care that I have a, a to plug it in to charge it. I, you know, I don't have a wireless charge pad, but I really don't care about that. I have this really nice short USB cable down here to plug in my phone to use Apple CarPlay when I'm using Google Maps, which is probably 1% of the time I'm driving. But for every other need, the Bluetooth for music works fantastic. The only thing I really have not gotten used to for a year of driving this car, and it's really my only complaint with how it drives, is the throttle tuning is a little strange when you're off the throttle. So one of the big things of the manual transmission vehicle is kind of the feeling of downshifting to a stoplight. And this car, as I described thoroughly in my pedal commander video, if you haven't seen that, check it out on the channel. But this car does not have virtually any engine braking when you let off the throttle in gear. You can downshift to a red light and the car barely has any resistance to slowing down. Honda does this with throttle body tuning. They keep it open at a higher angle when you're off the throttle. Like I said, I go into detail on that in the other video, but that's really the only thing that's annoying because I'm, I'm so used to, from all the older cars I've had, downshifting to a stoplight to save the brakes on the car and even going down a hill on the highway when you're doing 75 mile an hour in sixth gear the car you can let off the gas and you, your car won't accelerate down the hill or if you're approaching someone quick on the highway you can just let off the gas without riding the brakes and slow down pretty quick but not with this car it almost feels like it's rolling in neutral half the time when you're off the throttle so I really don't like that feeling and I'm gonna try to be correcting that with a K tuner here in the future stay tuned to the channel subscribe if you haven't already I'm gonna be doing a full custom tune on this car with the intent to keep it on 87 octane as a daily driver and just make it feel more like an older Honda with the throttle response and the behavior of it. So yeah, I've owned this car a little over a year now and throughout this next year, if you're staying tuned on the channel, I'm gonna be doing a few more things in just K-Tuner to personalize it to make it a little more uh, of my own. I'm gonna be doing, probably in the next video is probably gonna be the PRL high volume intake install and impressions and driving uh, review for that. I have it sitting new in the garage. So other than the PRL intake, I'm going to be doing a few other things to the car, including the SI rear suspension swap to liven this car up a little bit and make it more playful like the SI in handling characteristics. One thing I haven't really talked about in this video yet for issues I've mentioned is the sticky steering problem because I actually haven't had any signs of that issue. There is a recall out for the steering um, rack itself, which is basically you can turn the wheel too sharp and the inside of the wheels can contact the control arms. My car was checked at the dealer for that recall and was not in the affected VIN range. And in addition to that, the sticky steering is not a recall, but it's a separate issue Honda's dealing with. A lot of people talk about it online, but I have had no issues with the steering feel on this car other than my complaints about it being very numb. Uh, I don't ever use lane assist, lane keep assist on this car. I don't think I've used it more than click that button more than once or twice. I don't know if that's related to the sticky steering issue, if people are relying on lane assist too much, but I try to turn as many features off this car as I can every time I drive it. So a question I definitely get asked a lot is comparing this car to the SI. I already made a separate video on why I didn't buy the SI, and that was mainly because in my area I can't find one for anywhere near MSRP. They're all marked up still in 2024 and 2023 previously when I was looking for a new car. So if I were to buy an SI, I'd be almost $10,000 more out the door than this car. So that just, I couldn't justify that for a car I couldn't even really fit in because the main thing that stopped me from even entertaining them was the sunroof. It's very low in those cars. And if you're a taller guy, 
your my head hit into it. But I will say the SI sedan, I do like the looks of more than this hatchback. I think the body proportions uh, flow better on the, on the sedan models, especially the SI front grill, which is the same as the hatchback grill. Um, coupled with the rear end and the dual exhaust finishers on the SI makes it a much better looking car from exterior perspective than, than this car. So this car is definitely a close second though. I, I think the car looks a lot better with the OEM duckbill spoiler I added. It definitely looked really like an egg without it. So I'm very glad that they have that available to purchase and you can get it shipped overseas to add to the car because I think it really completes the car with the one element it was missing. But I'm not saying that this car is, is a bad looking car from the exterior. It's actually one of my favorite parts of this car is how good it looks and, and how good Honda did with the styling in this generation. There's been numerous times where I've been at a gas station or out in public in a parking lot with my car and people have walked by it and told me, nice car. And even kids will look at it and say, nice car, man. And I'm just confused every time it happens because it's literally, when I bought this car, this is a base model Civic. This is one of the cheapest cars you can buy brand new in America right now. And people are walking by it and saying nice car are just as frequent as the compliments I'd get in my S2000. So that speaks volumes for how sharp this car is and for the price point Honda sells it to you at, being at $25,000 when I bought this car, that it's a really good looking car. It's got the sharp wheels, it's got you know, really nice styling on the body lines, the side skirts, the rear end, the spoiler that I put on. Everything flows really well in this generation. It's the main reason I didn't consider getting a 10th generation used is because the 11th generation, I think the exterior styling is just so far ahead and just so much more mature looking. There's barely any fake vents on the car and there's no really body lines that don't make sense on this car. I just think it looks really, really good. There was one instance where I was getting gas one day in this car and a kid came up to the car from or shouted out the window over his parents' car or whatever that, hey, nice car, man. And that I actually turned around behind me because I was, I couldn't believe he was talking to me. It's actually the first time it happened where I looked behind me and there's no one there. And I'm like, oh wait, you're talking to me about my base model Civics. So that's definitely not something I expected buying this just as a daily commuter and to not draw that much attention to myself. But in the end of the day, I gotta be honest with you guys, if you put a brand new eighth gen SI sedan next to this car, and told me you can have either or for the same price. I would pick the 8th Gen SI every single time. It's, I think it's a better looking car still to this day. I think everything about that car was pretty phenomenal. Um, and I believe it to be one of the last true high revving good K-series engines of all time that Honda offered. But this is, uh, this is what we're stuck with if you're looking for a brand new car today. Uh, I really did want to get back into an 8th Gen SI, however, with the kids and stuff now in my life and uh, you know very little time to myself traveling to find a car was not an option and anything rust free for an 8th gen that was low miles was over 500 miles away from me in New York and I didn't have the time to wait around so that's just my opinion on the 8th gen uh, how much I miss it dearly but not complaining in the 11th this is uh, still a very good looking car a very well uh, responsive car for a brand new car of course you just really can't compare it to the cars that are a decade or older because of how much better they felt and how much more analog they felt to drive. So overall, no, I don't regret buying this car. I still think it's a fantastic value and one of the most reliable cars you can buy in 2024 now. The engine and transmission are absolutely phenomenal for a daily. They will last hundreds of thousands of miles without issue and just do your normal maintenance on them and you'll be completely fine. But as described earlier in the video, the issues I've had with the car, if the leaking hatchback continues further, I have it solved for right now, but if it continues to reoccur like a lot of people online says it has, that may lead me down the road of in future videos saying I do regret buying this car, but that's gonna be a whole different story. It has been a little bit of a frustrating experience, but with all that behind me now, I think that I would still recommend it as an awesome car being that none of the issues that are mentioned are gonna affect the drivability of the car, getting to work, getting the family around. There's nothing that's gonna fail. I have never had a check engine light and I don't ever have to worry about any issues with the drivetrain. Appreciate you guys watching. 
Stay tuned for future videos. Give the video a like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.